My name is Muki Zubis and I'll be bringing the reading to you this morning, which is from Luke chapter 11, verses 14 to 26. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armour in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in there and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Let's pray over Jody this morning. Father, I thank you for Jody. I thank you for the heart that she has, Father, and, and the message that you've placed in her heart this morning. Father, I pray that as she speaks, that your word, your truth, your grace, your love is poured out, Father God, to all those who are listening. May our hearts be soft and our ears be opening to, open to hear what you are saying to us this morning. And may we receive your message clearly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, Jodie. Amen. And thank you, Muki. What an amazing prayer to, to kick off a teaching moment with. So thank you so much. Um, before anyone mentions it on the chat, I am going to say I am very aware that my jumper this morning is totally on brand for the prayer series you got here. Uh, my, my blue circles, just like the graphic visual that we're using for the prayer series. So you don't need to mention it now. I'm well, well aware that it's exactly the same. And I'm thinking maybe I'll make it a thing every series, try and find a piece of clothing in my wardrobe that matches the graphics and makes it very memorable but so in case you forget what the series is you can look at the blue circles on my uh, jumper here and know that we're in the prayer series and we're, we're looking at the Lord's Prayer and Ian started us off last week uh, looking at our Father in Heaven our Father in Heaven and he he talked about how we can come confidently to the Father and you know this Lord's Prayer it comes from when the disciples said to Jesus Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And I, I wonder why they, they asked him to do that. Had they noticed that his prayers seemed to be different from the other, the other rabbis and the other teachers around, that the way that he prayed seemed to bring power in a different way, that when he prayed, when he withdrew and he prayed, that then miracles would happen and they would see things and signs and wonders. And I wonder if they're like, Lord, teach us to pray like that. And so Jesus then gives them the Lord's Prayer that we know of in Luke 11 and also Matthew. And, and he goes through. And like Ian said, it's, it's a great prayer. And I think it's a great prayer to, to recite. I think it's good to, to speak scripture out. I think there's power in that. But I think the Lord's Prayer is more than a prayer just to recite. I think it's Jesus teaching us a pattern of how to pray, a way to pray. And more than that, I think he's teaching us essentially how to live. I think as we unpack it over these coming weeks, we'll see not only is it a prayer to pray and a way to pray, but actually it's a way to live. To run to our Father first. What a great place to start any day. To run to our Father, to come to him confidently, knowing he's our Father and we're his children. I can't think of a better way to, to start a prayer or to start a day. And then we get to this point where today we're looking at praying in the kingdom because it says, your kingdom come. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. And 
In another version, in Matthew, it says, your, after that, it says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think it's really key that we remember this is coming out of the context of coming to our Father. That we've come to our Father confidently, knowing he's a Father who wants to give good gifts, like we looked at last week as it says after the prayer. Our God in heaven is a Father, a Dad who knows how to good, gift, good gifts. And so we come to that Father who knows how to give good gifts and we say, your kingdom come. Your will be done. He's a good God. And I think it changes when we know it's in the context of coming to our Father. That same Father who wants us to live in a full life, a fullness of life, an abundance of life. To, to say yes to everything he's inviting us into. And so we say these words, three words, your kingdom come. Three words. And honestly, as I've prepared for this and I've grappled with it for years, but I think those three words actually are a lifetime of unpacking. Your kingdom come. And so there's no way that we can neatly tie up what praying the kingdom is uh, this morning. There's no way I can do that with you this morning uh, over 20, 25 minutes. Just, just give up that idea. This is not going to give you all the answers to what the kingdom is. Your kingdom come. Three words, a lifetime. I think God's ex asking us and, and wanting us to go explore what that means. And so this morning, is, it's an invitation, really, more than anything else, to, to invite you in. Let's go explore together what it means to pray the kingdom in. Let's go away and ask questions. What is this kingdom? What does it mean to, to pray the kingdom? What does it mean to live the kingdom? What does this mean? Go away. Go to your restore small groups if you're in a small group. If you're not, get in one. Ask each other questions. This is a huge thing. Let's, let's explore together. Let's discover. Let's ask questions. Let's have Zoom coffees and Zoom dinners. Let's go for walks with another person at a distance. Say, what do you think this kingdom is? What do you think it is? Because, you know, in the words of Rainer, it's a slippery potato. We can't quite get a grip on it. I think I used that phrase right. Rainer, let me know. But, you know, we can't quite get it right. Can't get, quite get our, our hands on what this kingdom thing is. Even Jesus, when he was describing the kingdom, said it's a little bit like this, but it's also a little bit like that. It's, it's like buried treasure, but it's also like a mustard seed. It's not yet here, but it's coming, it's near, and it is now. I, that is a slippery potato. I think that is what we don't even know. And Hannah and, Sam, uh, Hannah and Sammy, we've started putting their names together, calling them Samma. Hannah and Sammy um, uh, spoke so beautifully about it this morning in our family time. And I just want to kind of take an aside and say, if you missed the family time this morning, you've missed part of the message. I've genuinely cut things out of my talk because Hannah and Sammy have already shared that part of the message. The, the, the 10.20, we start at 10.20 and that family time is not an add-on to our service. It is part of our message that God is giving us for today. It's part of who we are. So if you've not been here at 10.20 before, I want to say make an effort. And if you missed this morning, go back and watch Hannah and Sammy because they've they helped to understand what the kingdom is and what it means. And so I'm not going to say it because they've said it and there's no need. Um, so go back and watch that. But the kingdom, we can't quite get a handle on what it is. And what is amazing about this bit in Luke is that after Jesus has shared the Lord's Prayer, we get this teaching kind of in chapters through the rest of 11, 12 and 13, where Luke puts accounts that help us unpack some of what we're saying in this prayer and what Jesus is teaching us in this prayer. And so we get this bit today that Mookie read and uh, we'll get onto it in a second. And I don't know how long after Jesus taught on prayer that that account happened. But what I do know is that Luke has put it in there because it really helps unpack what it means. It really helps give depth and context to what it means to pray the kingdom in, your kingdom come. And I think it helps us to pray more confidently when we've understood it, it helps us to not only come to Father confidently, but to then to pray confidently, your kingdom come. And so 
like I said, that passage that Mookie read so beautifully, and I love the little smirk every now and then when the tricky words came up, but uh, <laughs> it's not the easiest. So I'm just going to give us some bullet points, okay, so we can capture what that passage was saying because it's a lot of words and quite confusing. So essentially, Jesus um, is, has cast out a demon out of somebody and the demon had made that person mute. And so as the demon was cast out, the person was also healed and able to speak. And so then talk starts out with a speculation. What kind of power does this Jesus have? What's going on here? Because these healings, they need to be explained. They can't be denied because they're definitely taking place in front of our very eyes, but they need to be explained. What power is he using? And so the religious leaders are questioning Jesus and his healing powers. And they think Satan could be responsible, Beelzebub. So that's the name they're using for Satan in this passage. And Jesus, it says, Jesus, knowing their thoughts, responds. I love that. Jesus always just speaks straight to the situation. Knowing their thoughts, he responds. And he talks about this issue of a divided house. And he's basically saying, why would I be doing the work of Satan? That's, that's kind of a, a divided house. Why would Satan send me if he's got his own people to do his own you know, henchmen, as it were, to do his work? Why would he send me? Satan can't stand against himself. A divided kingdom cannot stand. He's like, I'm, I'm the son of God. I represent God's kingdom. I'm here to do God's work. And Satan has his own agenda. And he's got his henchmen to do his work. Why you can't be, it's not a divided kingdom. He says, but if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And what's really, really interesting in that bit is that phrasing, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So often when we read about Jesus talking about the kingdom, he says it's near, the kingdom is near, it's coming. But here he says, the kingdom has come upon you. If, you. if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Yeah, what? I thought it wasn't here, it's not yet, but now you're saying it's come because you've driven out demons by the finger of God. I, <laughs> Basically, he's saying this, this visual, what is happening before your very eyes is a graphic display of God's power God's rule, God's reign, God's plan advancing, his kingdom coming. What you're seeing right now is the kingdom come. It's everything God desires for us, a fullness of life. The restoration of all things. He is the restorer of our souls. And so what you're seeing now, this, this restoration of this person, the kicking out of the demon, the healing of the, 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 the mute being able to speak. This is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. It's come. It's here. And just kind of log that in your brain for a moment, that, that it's visual. It's here. It's real. It's physical. And the other thing about the divided kingdom, as Jesus teaches on it, is it teaches us about unity. And we know it said well, where two or three gather, when we agree in his name, it will be done. That we come together and that importance of unity, of being fully in and saying, I'm in. I'm in the kingdom. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to my father and saying, your kingdom come. And I'm gathering with others who are saying the same. Where two or three agree on earth, it will be done. The importance and the power of agreement. We don't want to be a divider. I think one of the, the greatest tricks of the enemy, not the cleverest, but probably the greatest, is that he causes division. And we know how important unity is. And he causes division in us. We say kind of, we, sometimes we stand in two kingdoms. And God's saying, I'm inviting you in to the fullness of who I am, to be fully in the kingdom. Be fully in. Don't... It's, you can't be in two, two kingdoms. A divided kingdom cannot stand. So if you want to be a part of the kingdom, if you want to see the kingdom of God, be fully in and then fully agree with others around you. And as we fully agree and we pray the kingdom in, there's this word, we talk about different types of prayer. And one type of prayer is intercession. 
And you may have heard it, you may not, that might be a brand new word for you. But intercession is kind of when we pray for situations and people. And we ask God to break in and come. And that word intercession comes from the word intercede, to intercept. And it's like when we pray those prayers, we're intercepting the work of the enemy. We're saying, whoa, 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 stop. You are not welcome here. And we intercept the work of the enemy and release the will of God instead. Now, um, I'm not much of a Lord of the Rings fan. I'm really sorry. I don't have loads of trivia, but I do know who Gandalf is. Um, and so I've got a really, really, it's a really short clip. If you blink, you'll miss it. But I just wanted to show you, because I think this totally sums up in these few seconds, very few seconds, so eyes wide open, but very few seconds, kind of what it means to intercept the work of the enemy. So let's, let's see Gandalf in action. You shall not pass! That was it. I told you if you blink, you miss it. <laughs> Copyright issues, we can't go for long clips. But um, if, I had, if I had a staff here, I would bang it down. Like it's that... It's that passionate, you shall not pass. This is not the kingdom of God. This is not the things of God. This is not the fullness of life that God is inviting us into and that God is calling us all to be restored to. This is the work of enemy. And we intercept that in the name of Jesus. And we say, no, in Jesus' name, you shall not pass. And I get very excited about this because I can't believe that God invites us in to do that with him, to have the authority. If we have come to our Father and we are living in relationship restored, restored relationship with him, then we have the authority to intercept the enemy and say no to his plans. Isn't that amazing? Like this kingdom thing is, is mind-blowing. That's why I said it may be three words, but it's a lifetime of exploration and questioning and finding out. Now, lots of people like me get very excited at the thought of saying no to the, no to the enemy. And, um, you know, there are people who will say, get out and Satan and shout at Satan, da 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 And that's, uh, that's amazing in some way. You know, go sickness, go fear. But what we must, must, must remember is if we're saying no to the enemy and we're intercepting and we're saying get out, then we must usher in the kingdom, the will of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done. That's what that bit about the empty house is at the end of the reading that Mookie read. That if, we're, if we're clearing the house, if we leave it empty, it's susceptible to be filled again with the wrong things and maybe with greater wrong things. And so if we're, if we're clearing the house of the enemy, we then release God into those spaces. We release the will of God. You know, Isaiah 61 is, is one of our, um, what is our mandate, it is our mission. It was Jesus' mission, Jesus' mandate. And I love that there's an exchange in there. There's beauty for ashes. There's joy for mourning. There's praise instead of despair. It's not just, I'll get rid of the despair that is from the enemy, but I'm going to bring in praise. I'm not going to just say no to mourning, but I'm going to bring in and release joy. I'm not going to say just no to the ashes and the spirit of death, but I'm going to say yes and usher in and release the spirit of life and beauty. And we get to do that. We get to do that. If there's, if there's sickness, we get to say no. I intercept this in Jesus' name. I say no to the enemy. I say no to the cancer cells eating up this body. And I release health and healing and shalom the completeness and the restoration of God. If the enemy has a hold on someone, or on you, maybe, we get to say no to the enemy. But do you know what's even better? We get to call out the things of God in them. And I think this is key. It's the Sal Bonner that we've talked about recently, that Reinhardt so beautifully brought to us. Sal Bonner, I see you. I see who God has made you to be. And I think when we're praying over people and communities, to say no to the enemy, that's great, to intercept. But let's focus on what God wants to bring about. Let's, let's focus our prayers on calling out the kingdom, calling out the things of God, the fullness of God, the gifts of God, the goodness of the gifts of our Father 
in people, in our communities, in our nation. Let's call that stuff out. Let's release that. Words bring life. We know this. Words bring life. And we want to speak life more than anything. Ultimately, ultimately, the battle that we are in is spiritual. It's between death and life. Between darkness and light. And we get to pray the kingdom in. We get to pray light into situations and people's lives. We get to pray life in to situations and lives. And I think that's an incredible invitation that we're asked to be a part of. So here's a question. Do you want to have a go? For the next couple of minutes, do you want to have a go? Is there a situation that you know is not the will of God, that you know is not saturated with kingdom? I mean, if you're struggling, I could name a few. What about the virus? What about sickness? What about death? What about racism? What about violence? I could go on and those things are not king. They're not of the God. They're not good gifts from our Father. And we want to release the goodness of God. And we want to say no to the work of the enemy. And the thing about that language of your will be done, it's really commanding. And I love how Catherine Waite says, you know, we need to get, say our bossy prayers. And so we're going to do some bossy praying right now. So I think it would be great if you stood up. So I don't know where you are. You might be in your bedroom. You might be in your kitchen. Uh, you might be on your sofa. Can I invite you, if you want to pray in the kingdom over somebody who, who's on your heart, or a situation who's on your heart, that's on your heart, can I invite you to stand up? Because we stand in the authority of our Father in heaven. Jesus is inviting us in to pray kingdom, to pray God's goodness, God's fullness of life, God's abundance of life into all areas of this world. And to call out the God things in people's lives. To say, I see in you. And we release that and we speak life. And so why don't you stand as you do this? You can even stand on a chair if you want. If you want to get really like up there and like, I'm there. But stand up. Let's go bossy with our prayers. And let's pray against, let's say no to the, let's intercept and say, you shall not pass. Enough is enough. And then release the kingdom of God into situations. So we're going to be confident because we can come to our Father confidently. We know that prayer works, that it's, it shows that the kingdom is here. And so we want to pray with confidence that the kingdom is here. And we want to pray with that authority that we're given if we're living in a restored relationship with our Father in heaven and we're under his rule. And so we want to pray now. We're going to take just a minute or two um, to pray over these situations. If you're someone who likes to write, you can write on the chat what you're praying over, what you want to see released in the kingdom of God, what you want to see, uh, what you want to call out in your community, what you want to call out in the lives of those you love and you're hurting for, what you want to call out, the, the beauty of God and the gold of God and the gifts of God and the, the, uh, the healing of God and the wholeness and the restoration. Let's release that in Jesus' name. So we're going to pray now. I'm going to pray. You're going to pray. Um, if you're with people, pray together. You can speak in tongues if, you're, if you are able and willing and want to do that. I recommend it to pray in tongues, but also to pray in your in your own own language as well to speak out the kingdom of God and to release then say no to the enemy so let's just take a minute now just to pray that out father God we come to you confidently we come to you confidently because you are our father in heaven our dad in heaven and you know how to give good gifts and in, in that we want to say Lord would your kingdom come would the gifts of your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? Father, I think of my friends who are going through tough relationship issues. And Lord, I know that that is a tough thing. There's heartbreak, there's pain. And I want to say no to the enemy where he's causing division. I want to say no to the enemy where he's causing uh, upset and pain and destruction in families' lives. And I want to say, Lord, would you bring unity? Lord, we release life into those marriages. We, re we release healing on their hearts. We release peace on households. Lord, may they see one another with your eyes. May they see each other in your eyes, through your eyes, that they would see the kingdom in one another.
Lord, where the enemy seeks to bring destruction. We say no in Jesus' name and we release restoration. We release reconciliation. We release the fullness of all that you are and all that you offer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Hannah and Sammy, they said that if we're, if we're God's children, we're part of his kingdom. And I love that. That kingdom that is, is not here, but it's here, it's, it's near, it's this, it's that, it's buried treasure, it's a mustard seed. But it's basically about the realm of heaven, isn't it? It's not just, in simplistic terms, it's not just about the king and the kingdom. It's about more than that. It's about this abundant life that, that permeates all around us, that we want to see in the everyday. And I wanted to show a clip from War Room, um, which is a, a favourite film of mine. Priscilla Shira, if you don't know her, she's a, a Bible teacher, preacher. She also acts um, and she's a phenomenal woman. Priscilla Shira, look her up. Um, she has done loads of Bible study uh, things uh, that you can follow. She does loads of teaching. But anyway, in the, in the film War Room, uh, there's a bit where she really... Um, does exactly what we've just said. She kind of says no to the enemy and releases all that God's got for her and her family. Due to copyright, I can't show that clip. Uh, so I just thought I would show a quote from Priscilla Shira instead, uh, just to share with you. But she says, prayer is what opens up the floodgates for God to come down and be involved in our everyday circumstances. Prayer is what opens up the floodgates for God to come down and be involved in our everyday circumstances. Because this thing of the kingdom is spiritual, but it's also physical. It's, it's two sides of the same coin. And so when we're, when we're praying uh, against the darkness and against death, and we're releasing life in the spirit, and we're releasing light in the spirit, and health and wholeness and wellness, and salbona and shalom, then when we're doing that, there's also a physical aspect to that as well, where, where we're saying, God's kingdom come, your kingdom come here on earth, in the physical, in the everyday. And I think when we're, there's something about this fully, fully stepping into all that God's inviting us into. And that's why I think it starts with prayer. And, and I'm reminded of these verses, uh, one from Luke and one from Matthew, which I'm going to show. In Luke 11, 7 to 8, it says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And then in Matthew, it says, but seek first his kingdom. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. And I really felt, seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. Go to our Father. Go to him, all that he is, all that he's inviting us into, a restored life, a full life, an abundant life. And love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Seek first his kingdom. If you're thinking, I don't know where to start, this all sounds amazing but I don't even know where to begin. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first loving him, loving our Father. Start with prayer, coming to him as Jesus has taught us, our Father in heaven, our dad. Let's come to him and then in agreement with him, saying your kingdom come. Basically, we're agreeing to participate in it, to be a part of this kingdom life to bring life. And again, three words, a lifetime of exploration. Your kingdom come. We get to, like Hannah and Sammy said, to, to take the kingdom wherever we go. Because if we've sought the kingdom first for our own lives, if we are filled with, if the kingdom is in me, which, it says, which Jesus said as well, the kingdom is in me. Because I've come to my father, your kingdom come in my life. 
Don't let me be a divided house. I want to be fully in. I want to seek your kingdom first. Then wherever I go, his kingdom goes. And the spiritual starts to impact the physical. Jesus said it another way. He said we get to be God's salt and light. Or as Eugene Peterson said in the message, God's, um, God's flavours and God's colours. And that for me just brings it to life. That wherever you and I go, every one of us gets to be God's flavour and God's colour. We get to bring out the God flavour, the, the, the goodness of God, God the God colour, the, the beauty of God wherever we go. So what does that look like practically? In verses 24 to 26, you know, they talk about very practical steps. You know, they didn't just pray. Jesus didn't just pray your kingdom come. He, then, he didn't just pray for people to be healed. They got healed. They didn't just uh, pray for the people to be fed. They got fed. It was very practical. And so not only do I want to encourage us to, to be praying and interceding, intercepting the enemy and releasing the light, God of, God's life and love over situations and people, and not only do I want us to be seeking his kingdom, but also think about what does that mean practically? How do I get to be kingdom? How do I get to bring life, God's flavours and God's colours to the people and the community around me? If I'm praying for my, my neighbour to be a Christian, that's great. If I'm praying for my neighbour to experience the fullness of God, if I'm praying for my neighbour to experience the fullness of what it is to have a, a God life in them and a, you know, to, to know his restoration... There are things that I can then participate in to help them taste and see that the Lord is good, the flavours and the colours. We haven't got to make anyone do it. We haven't got to convince anyone. Just shake that off you. If that's on you, shake that off you. It's not our job to convince anyone to know God and say yes to Jesus. It's not our job to do all those things. Our job is to say, come and see taste and see and we get to be the God flavours and the God colours and bring the God flavours and the God colours out in the world around us so that people for themselves can taste and see that the Lord is good that they themselves can come to a father confidently knowing that he loves them that's kingdom so what does it look like I think it looks like this I think it looks like everyone every day everywhere and if you've been on our app or our website recently, you'll have seen those words. But I'm so passionate that it's about every one of us living this kingdom life because we've sought, we seek first his kingdom and then we take it with us, every one of us, wherever we go, every day. I know a lot of us are desperate to gather again on a Sunday morning. But that's not the be all and end all. Seek first his kingdom. Let's not seek first his gathering. We are going to be making plans to gather as soon as opportunities uh, are allowed and we're given permission. We're looking at small gatherings in different locations across the life of Restore. And so we are heading that way. So please don't be discouraged. We are looking to gather together once again to encourage one another, to celebrate God's goodness together. That's good. But that's not, that's not the end goal. That's not the be all and end all. Seek first his kingdom. Pray the kingdom in. Now, we're not all going to go out this afternoon and cast out demons and heal the mutes so they can speak. I'm pretty convinced that not many of us are there yet. And so please don't panic that that's, that's what the kingdom is. Like Hannah and Sammy said, and I know I keep referring to them, but they did such a good job. The, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Do you know how small a mustard seed is? It's like a little speck. And that's, it, that's how the kingdom of God is. Like it starts like a speck. So we can do something really small for the kingdom, full of the spirit, releasing life, saying, I see in you, sal bona. I see the goodness of God in you. I see all that God's called you to be. And we can just do that small thing and it grows and grows and grows and grows. That's the kingdom. And so it starts with prayer. It has to start with prayer. We're in the prayer series, but it has to start with prayer. And something we we're talking about practical, something we looked at quite a while ago now, but have brought up time and time again, is this acronym, BLESS. So it's going to come up there, it is BLESS. Begin with prayer. 
Listen, listen, begin with prayer. Think about the, the people and the situations you want to see, uh, see know God and his goodness. I think of my neighbours, I think of some of my friends, and, you know, to pray for them, to begin with prayer, to, to write their names down and say, right, those five people I'm going to pray for every day. And then to listen to what God's saying, but listen to what my friends are saying too. And then it's really good to eat together. I know that's tricky right now, but you know what? I had a Zoom dinner last night uh, with some friends um, and it's great. You can have a Zoom dinner if you want, but eat. There are different ways. We have to get creative about it right now, but eat together because something happens when we're around the table chatting. What does this mean to you? What does that mean to you? Jesus ate with people all the time. It's one of the greatest things about him. Well, that might be a bit. One of the things I love about him, put it that way. Um, begin with prayer, listen, eat, and then we, we serve, we're listening in, we're, we're sharing life with people. And we're, we're, working, we're finding out how can I serve, how can I bring kingdom into this person's life? How can I share life? How can I bring the goodness of God into this life? And then we get to share our story of who God is to us, the beauty of his kingdom to us. Come taste and see, the Lord's good. Taste and see. And I think practically that's how it works out. And then finally, you know, this week we're, we're going into Lent. And Heidi mentioned earlier, but we're going to have 40 days of prayer. 40 days of prayer during Lent. Um, you can also fast if you want. Um, but we're, we want to really focus on praying that over these 40 days. We want to pray blessing over our communities. We want to pray blessing over our neighbours, over our friends, over our families. We want to intercept the work of the enemy and release the goodness of God and the kingdom of God. And so ask God over these next few days, Lord, where do you want me to start? Who, who shall I be praying for? Who have you laid on my heart? Which streets, which neighbours, which part of my community? Is it the schools and the teachers? Is it the hospitals? Is it the business owners? Where, where can I be praying to see more of your kingdom life released? And we'll start to see the mustard seed grow. I truly believe that. I'm, I'm so anticipating the visuals, the accounts we'll have, the stories we'll have to tell, saying the kingdom has come. I think this is a really significant time for us as a church to step into the fullness of all that God's got for us. I, you know, there is so much to say about the kingdom, but I think more than anything, it's about saying, God saying, the kingdom's in here. It's in you. Seek first my kingdom. Everything else will be added. But practically, how are you going to do that this week and over the 40 days? So maybe you want to write on the chat again and just some ideas. Maybe it's dropping a gift off to a neighbor. Maybe it's, I don't know, providing something. Maybe it's listening. There is so, maybe it's walking the streets in prayer. I, there's so much possibility out there. Maybe it's signing up to, to mentor kids uh, or read to kids in schools. I know someone who does that, or, or a few people who do that already, and it's happening even over Zoom. But how can I bring life? How can I bring the kingdom of God into this world? How can I say no to the enemy and yes to all the things of God? Maybe it's getting in touch with Heidi or, or one of us and saying, I want to be a part of this welcome, being a welcome ready church, being a Hong Kong ready. Because that's, that's the love of God, isn't it? That's welcoming in unity, not division. There are so many things that we can get practical about. And so why don't we pray about that over this? But I want you to, if you've got a pen and paper nearby, grab it. If you've got your... This is me typing. It's not me. Normally it's like that. But if you've, if you've got your keypad, maybe you want to type it. Type something a practical, practically. How can I live out the kingdom of God this week? What does that look like for me? What does that look like? Because it's spiritual, but it's also physical. And we want to pray the kingdom in. And we can get to be a part of that. God invites us in. And I just am so anticipating. I'm so expectant for all that's to come. I think this is, and I don't like using the word because it's been overused in the last 12 months, but I think this is a pivotal moment for us. I really do. That it's almost like, and someone had a picture this morning on our prayer group, but it's almost like lights going off in our homes. Like, whew, I'm praying for revelation of the kingdom in our own lives and in the lives of those around us, that we might see his kingdom come, his will be done on earth, as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. As the band come up to, to lead us in our last bit of worship, why don't we pray together? Again, you want, if you want to stand, 
to put your feet on the ground because you're going to be practical this week. Or if you're busy writing or typing, just be a part of this moment to say, I want to be part of this kingdom. I want to be the mustard seed. I want to bring my small bit and see the kingdom of God grow. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you are restoring all things, that you are reconciling us to you and to one another and to creation. And Lord, I pray for a deep revelation for each one of us of what it is to, to live kingdom, to be kingdom, to see your kingdom come in our own lives, in the lives of our friends and family and neighbours, in the lives of our community and our nation and our world. Lord, in all the different spheres we represent. Father, we pray your kingdom come, your restoration life come, your wholeness come, your shalom come. Lord, we call out the, the God things in people's lives. We call out people's original design. Lord, may we become all that you've created us to be. Lord, may our communities be transformed in Jesus' name to bring you glory. May we see transformation. May we see kingdom life happening. And may we see spiritual battles won, but may we see physical stuff change. Lord, we do pray for those who are sick right now in our church family. Lord, we want to name them in Jesus' name. Lord, we all carry so many people. Lord, I want to pray for Steve. I want to pray for Maureen. Father, and I pray healing in Jesus' name. I want to see their, your kingdom come in their lives. I want to see a wholeness and a restoration to their body in Jesus' name. And Father, for each of us, would you show us how to live this kingdom life? Lord, thank you that it's a lifetime of exploration. Lord, thank you that you invite us into the, the adventure. And I want to say, for me, I'm in. I don't want to be a divided house. I'm in. Show me what it is. This week, in this moment in history, to see the goodness of God flowing out of our lives and our homes and our communities. In Jesus' name, amen.